Good evening, everybody. Give me just a second to make sure that I am live everywhere I am supposed to be. And then we will get started. I'll give you just a minute and let everybody hop on before I get going here. All right, we are about to get started here. All right, let me close this out. Hello, 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 everybody. So good to see you. If you are here with me tonight, say hello. Let me know where you're from. Um, I am using StreamYard. So if you have not watched a live uh, with somebody from StreamYard yet, um, go ahead and give StreamYard permission. Um, that allows us to see your comments. Otherwise, I cannot see your name. Um, and that's no fun. So uh, I'll leave that up for a minute. Um, Welcome, welcome everybody. I see people hopping on. I hope everybody had a fantastic holiday. I know this week is kind of an in-between week for a lot of people, uh, but I hope that you find some uh, peace, some calm in painting this evening. Um, we are, oops. My sample here. We are painting this uh, cream and sugar poppies, which is uh, just kind of a fun modern take on fl florals, on flowers. Um, poppies are my absolute favorite. Um, if we have not met yet, um, I can see that one of my cameras has given me a hard time, so I'm going to take that off after we get started. Um, it's just my face. It's cool if my face is blurry, right? Um, but anyway, uh, if we have not met before, my name is Tara Lynn and I'm the owner of the Painted Cicada and I am a mixed media and acrylic artist um, and also your fearless leader here in the online paint night group. So uh, welcome to the cream and sugar poppies uh, event this evening. Um, let me get rid of my face here. All right. Let's get started. Um, before we begin, um, you're going to need some basic painting supplies. You need something to paint on. Um, there are tracers available for uh, like an eight by ten to nine by twelve ish. I'll be I'll be I paint in an art journal. I'll be using a nine by twelve this evening, um, but there is a sixteen by twenty tracer as well. Um, just know if you are working on a 16 by 20, it's just going to take you a little bit longer. I'll be working here in my art journal. I like to use art journals for a lot of my acrylic painting. Um, so as I mentioned, there were tracers available on my website at paintedcicada.com. Um, if you don't want to use a tracer, that is perfectly fine. I'll walk you through the drawing step by step here in just a few minutes. Um, as far as paint brushes go, I use pretty much um, four standard size paint brushes almost universally. Um, so I use three flats. I call it my daddy bear, my mommy bear, and my baby bear. I just use a small, medium, and a large flat. Um, if you've painted with me before, you know I don't give out brush sizes by number because they're different between brands anyway. Um, and then I always have a round for details. So those are the four brushes uh, I will probably be reaching for this evening. Uh, as far as paint colors go, 
Um, you'll see here the colors are pretty basic. Um, I've got burgundy and red. If you don't have a burgundy color, you can tone down your red with a little bit of black or even um, add a little bit of uh, deep blue um, to darken that red. Otherwise, red and burgundy, white and black, which I use in almost every painting. And then I've got cream, which is my unbleached titanium. Um, you may also notice that this evening I'm using um, my Decor Americana craft paints. Uh, most of the paintings that I do, I really like to use. Um, I, I am a thin bodied paint person. Um, you can absolutely, if you've got um, these artist paint here, heavy body paint, you can absolutely use those. Um, just know that your paint's going to be a little thicker. It's going to end up more textured and it's going to take a little longer to dry. Um, but when you're choosing your paint, there's really no right or wrong. Just use what you love. All right. So if you signed up with me, you got the tracers. Um, However, these flowers are fairly easy, so um, if you need to get your sketch going, uh, I start with two hearts, and these are going to be the center of my flowers. So wherever you want the center of your flowers, and they don't have to be perfect hearts, They're, these are just kind of the, uh, the, the centers there. Hello, hello. Lots of people hopping on. I guess I should give it a, a minute here and let everybody catch up. Um, so I'm just working on the sketch right now. Um, if you need to use your tracer, um, now is the time. I'm going to do this with the Sharpie just so you can see it, but don't feel like you have to do that. Um, when we get started painting, we are going to start with uh, the background, and then we're going to move our way um, up. Yes, um, somebody asked, um, will this stay up for a bit? Absolutely. This is going to be in the group in guide one, and then um, you'll also be able to find it if you go to the media and then the videos. So absolutely, this will stay up for a while. You can watch on the replay if you're not able to paint with us this evening. All right, so from this heart, which is going to be, um, I don't know my flower parts. I think that's a, called a stamen. Um, we're going to put the two, two petals that kind of go in the front here. So um, we've got our center. I'm just going to add kind of a petal here. Teardrop shape. Give it a little hook on the end. And then another one coming off the other side. That is going to be the front of my flower. And the back of my flower goes right off the page. So I can just kind of pretend there's just a big giant petal back here and a big giant petal back there. And then poppies have very thin stems. So I'm going to start nice and thick here at the top and then just come down to a nice thin thin stem down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here, same type of flower. So I'm going to do two petals here in the front. If you need to go off your canvas or off your page, that is fine. And then, um, I'll just do kind of like one long wavy petal there in the back. That's the back of my flower. And then the stem here in the front. And 
And then in the back, we've got uh, some leaves going on. So I'm going to just create kind of these bumpy leaf parts. That is it for my sketch. Now, as far as the background goes, um, we are going to create gray. So I've got my palette here. I'm going to mix up a medium gray. So I'm going to put some black on my palette. I'm going to put some white on my palette. And I am going to use a nice big paintbrush. Um, and I want mostly white and just a touch of black. I want this to be a nice little light gray background. Also, don't worry too much about... Well, I don't worry too much about my paint being perfectly blended because I like to see um, kind of some of that streakiness. Now, what I need to do is just put out my background coat. I can go over some of these edges. I don't want to see them. And just cover up most of that background. I like it to be a little streaky. I'm actually going to come back and enhance the streakiness after I get my gray on there. If you prefer to have a blended background, feel free to blend out your background. I like mine nice and streaky. I like it to look painterly. I like it to not look like a photograph. That's my style. Acrylic paint is wonderful for layering. So you'll see here on my sample, we're working from the background forward. So just get a nice gray background on there. I've chosen to kind of work at a diagonal here. That's totally up to you.
All right, now I've called these cream and sugar poppies because I am only using white and cream um, and the colors. So I'm gonna get a little bit of cream out here, whatever cream color you'd like. This one is, a, this one is called Unbleached Titanium. Um, one of my favorites, Unbleached Titanium comes in almost every brand or every brand has um, an unbleached titanium, I guess I should say. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to add in my leaf back here. I'm going to use one full coat of this unbleached titanium. Just go right off the bottom of your page. I love this color. I love this cream. Now what I want to do, um, I'm this is going to stay a little wet. I'm going to come back to this gray here that I used earlier. Maybe I'll even mix a little bit of that titanium in there. And I am going to tap in some of this darker gray color right down the middle. I'm going to wipe off my brush and then I'm going to go back in and tap it out. Just kind of blending some of that in. This is not a hyper realistic painting, so I'm really just kind of adding in some shadowing in the center of this leaf. If you feel like you've gone a little heavy, you can always just tap in some of that cream around the edges. Hi, Shalene. Glad you could hop on. So I really just painted my leaf with cream and then I tapped in a little bit of that gray um, right around the center. Give everybody a minute or two to catch up because I know we're probably all working on different sizes. Yes, I don't want anybody to rush. Let's take our time this evening. We've got plenty of time. Hi, Rhonda from Utica, New York. 
I know exactly where that is. So yes, lots of um, lots of opportunities to change this up as well as we work. So um, if you are all caught up with me, um, I'm going to use my flowers red tonight. Um, don't be afraid to change those up. If you are just joining in, um, we painted our backgrounds with a light gray. I made mine nice and streaky. I love to see the streaks in my paintings. Um, we're working from the background layer up. So the first thing um, I painted uh, was after the background was this leaf here. And I painted that with cream. I used nice titanium, unbleached titanium. And then I added just some taps of gray right down the center. Well, everyone is catching up. I did see a few late pe people register just a few minutes late. So I am um, the edges of the leaf um, don't need to be perfect, but um, I would make them nice and, you know, as clean as you can get them. We can always go back um, and touch up at the end. Uh, but I am, you know, I tried to make mine nice and clean. I just made kind of a ruffled edge. They don't have to have a perfect shape. And while everybody is catching up, I am just going to make sure everybody has the link here. I had a few people register just a little after we started, so... Actually, if you're working on the shape of that leaf, if you need to see, um, if I had the whole leaf on the page, this is what it would look like. So I just kind of make a, kind of these loops here on the edges. This is kind of my version of a, a poppy leaf. And then it's got the um, line down the center. And I just had mine go off the page. Um, your leaf can be different from mine. So, you know, you could just do half the leaf and that would, you know, maybe the leaf would be folded up. Um, whatever you want to do. It's in the background, so it's not going to end up being the focal point of your painting. So don't stress too much about that leaf. All right, before I move forward... I am going to just put two kind of sprouty things. I don't know if that's the official term, sprouty things here in the back. 
So I take some of that gray. I'm going to put gray on my paintbrush and then a little bit of that um, unbleached titanium. And I am just going to swoop. And I just made two big swoops up. Oh, Lizzie, yeah. If your paint um, takes a while to dry, um, I can see it doing that. Absolutely. Um, here's what I would recommend. Just get a first coat down on that background leaf. Um, yeah. So, for example, if you're using this um, heavy bodied paint, it takes a while to dry. It's designed to do that. It's just... Um, different paints dry at different rates. I would go ahead and get a, the first layer down of this leaf. And then as we work our way up and paint some of this in, um, you'll know where it is and we'll be able to go back once that layer has dried and you can add another nice clean layer over the top, Lizzie. So sometimes it's just the difference in paint. Um, I tend um, to prefer craft paint or um, I use a lot of this um, like fluid acrylic paint. I really like to work thin and of course thinner paint dries faster. So that's the only difference there. Hello, glad you could join us. All right, so we've got a gray background. We've got a cream leaf, um, which we can always add in later if you need to. Um, the next step that I'm going to do now that I've got um, black on my tray here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a thin flat brush and I am just going to add in my stems right here at the bottom. And I do my stems first because the red of that flower is going to come kind of over the edge of that stem. So it is a little farther away than those flower petals. All right, as I start to work on the color of my poppies, I am going to focus on using this burgundy. Um, I will come back to the primary red, the true red, uh, a little later and add some nice bright um, pops of color. Um, but what I'm going to do is use this burgundy. I need to get another plate here.
And I am actually going to do some color mixing right on um, my canvas here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get a nice wet coat of this burgundy. And I am going to paint in these back flowers or back, back petals. Now, shades of red tend to be more transparent um, than other paint colors, just because of the pigments that are used. And that's okay because we're going to add in some layers and some white. All right, so I've got this burgundy color down. Oops, I've got some reflection there. Just lift that up a smidge, that helps. All right, so I've got this red on this deep red, this burgundy. Nice and wet. While it's wet, I'm going to take some white. And I'm going to pull it up from the bottom. Wipe off my brush. And then I'm just going to blend in those strokes. And this is just going to lighten up the inside of that flower. And I go right over these edges because as we layer, that's going to get covered up. And then I am going to do the same thing down here with my little guy. And wherever my flower petal is, I'm going to cover with this burgundy paint. So these stemmy, stemmy little swoops that we did earlier, those are part of the background. So I'm going to paint right over those. Those are behind my flower petal. We'll put a nice thick coat of burgundy. Grab some white and a few strokes of white and then come back and blend it in a little. All right, so I'm just going to give this a minute to dry. All right, now I'm going to paint the front petals. Um, we do still have the little heart piece to add in. We can do that later. We're going to fo focus on the petals right now. 
So I am going to paint the front petal the same way. Nice layer of burgundy on both sides of this petal here in the front. And don't forget this one here. A little paint bugger in there. That happens sometimes. All right, so get a nice thick coat on there. Tap your paint in the white. I'm just going to add a few touches of white there. I'm going to wipe off my brush and I'm going to come back through and just blend this out, moving my brush down so that you can see the streaks uh, blending down there. And that just adds a little highlight at the top. We're gonna refine that. Um, if you only have primary colors, uh, Rona, um, what I would suggest if you're looking for cream, um, if you have titanium white and you, if you have brown, if you just mix the tiniest touch of brown with white, you can get cream. Um, if you don't have a cream, you can always, um, you know, go, go true to your colors. And instead of using cream for your, um, leaf there, you can always use green by mixing blue and yellow and kind of green it up a little bit. So you can totally paint the same painting and adjust your colors if you need to. Um, or you can do shades of gray as well. So if you don't have that cream, just mix up a different shade of gray for that leaf and that would be just as pretty. My colors are only suggestions. These paintings live only in my head, so feel free to change them up. Right, I'm gonna do the same thing here in the front. Got my burgundy. And I've got touches of white. Touch in that white, offload my brush, dry it off, and then blend in these white streaks. And you will see the edges um, are not real smooth right now. I'm going to come back in a little bit and I'm going to add some coloring on the edges. So I'm not too worried about that. Right now, I just want to get that white kind of blended in there. All right, now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this burgundy and I'm gonna blend just a shade darker. So I'm gonna use black. I usually don't use black for mixing, but 
when it comes to burgundy, it works pretty well. So, um, oops, that's really dark. Probably like one part black to four parts burgundy. And a nice dark red, like an ox blood, um, just a deep, deep, deep red there. All right, got too much paint on my brush for mixing. All right, here we go. So we've got this nice deep color. Now I'm going to come around the bottom of my two front petals here. And I'm going to add this nice deep color right along this bottom edge. Once I do that, I'm going to offload my brush. That just means wipe it off, get it nice and dry, and then blend it up so that it's not a stark line. If it's dried a little bit, you can just tap a little bit of color and blend upward. idea here is to use the paint that's on the painting and not on the palette. So we're just blending some of this darkness up just the tiniest bit there. And then I'm going to do the same thing here in the front. Add some darkness. Just in the front, that's where it's shadowed. And then blend it upward. your paint dries quickly like mine you can always dip into the paint just make sure you offload it a bit before you blend you want very little paint on this brush very little paint this is a dry brush technique that we're using Okay, Lizzie says she's having trouble with the background color coming through her red leaf. Um, like I said, red is super transparent. So there are a few things you can do. Um, you can lay down a coat of red, let it dry, and then come back through and add another coat of red and work through the shading. So um, like I only did one coat of red, you could do two. Um, the other thing, that you could do is add a little white to your red paint. Um, your poppies are gonna be a little lighter. They're not gonna be as dark, but that's totally fine. Um, and the white paint is gonna add some um, opaqueness to your paint um, because red is just a really transparent color. So those are the two ways. Um, Sometimes with red, you just have to layer and work around. So for example, if I lift this up a little bit, you can see, you know, I drew in with Sharpie when we first got started so you could see my lines. I can still see some of that Sharpie through there um, because red is so transparent. So don't be afraid to layer, 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 layer when it comes to red. Um, also, you can mix in some white. It's going to change up your colors a bit, but poppies come in all different colors, so don't feel like it has to be exactly the same. Okay. 
All right. While I've got this dark burgundy mixed up here, I'm going to get a small round. And I'm going to use this dark color. Um, and what I'm going to do on these back petals here, I'm going to give them a little outline along my edges. I just want to darken up those edges. Here in the front, I'm going to add a nice dark edge. And what we're going to do after we edge these is we're going to add a little lip in the front. So this just defines the shape just a little bit. A nice dark edge. Now with the same dark burgundy color, what I'm gonna do is just add a little ruffle here in the front and then fill it in. And there's no right or wrong way. I just kind of make a wavy line there. And I'm doing it with that same deep burgundy color. And I just make the ruffle and then kind of blend it into that line right there where the flower petal, flower petal folds over. And then a little ruffle on this side as well. That's where these front petals are just kind of bending, giving a little shape. And we do the same thing down here. Don't overthink the ruffle. Any ruffle will look right. Now we are not going to move and blend that edge. That stays a hard edge. That is the flower petal bending. All right, I am going to give these reds just a minute to dry a little bit. And I will mention too, if you are working on a larger size or you're really just working a little slower than I am, that it's absolutely fine. Please don't feel like you have to rush. When this video is over, um, you can absolutely watch the replay. Um, you can pause, excuse me, you can pause it um, at any point that you need to catch up and it'll be available. It'll be here for you. So don't feel like you have to work at the same speed I do. Everybody works at a different speed and I know we're all working on different sizes so that is absolutely okay. 
Um, I'm going to let this dry a little bit here and I am going to go back to my white. And I'm just going to, now I don't want to go over my stem. I want to go behind my stem and behind my poppy, but I'm just going to add a little white um, vein here in my leaf. And then I'm just going to add in some little little bits and pieces there. Once I get it down, I kind of like to blend it out a smidge just so it's not so stark. I mentioned when we first started, we are going to mix in some of this true red. It really brightens up these poppies. So I'm just going to put a little bit here on my palette. Um, and I am going to show you um, just how I dry brush this. I really don't want very much on my brush. I don't want to make strokes. I want to use a dry brush technique. So um, tap your brush and a little bit of that true red, offload it just means wipe it off and what you want to see is that when you brush it there's just hardly any on that brush right like I don't want it to be streaky like this I want to offload it and I want the brush to just have very very little color so that when I when I brush it it's just the tiniest bit of pigment that's what I want. That's how we're going to do this. Um, and this just adds some nice bright color. And I'm going to put some kind of down here where this dark color meets the center of the poppy. And with this dry brush technique, I'm just kind of blending it on there very, very lightly. I don't want a lot of color. I don't want to see streaks. So I'm adding it here to my front petals. And the camera doesn't pick up on it quite as much as the eye, but it really brightens it up. And I'm going to come through on the back petals, just kind of where that white meets the edge there. Just blend in some of that bright color.
And that just gives it a little pop, a little brightness. And I'm going to go back in with my round. I'm going to go right into my black. I'm going to use straight black, and I'm going to add back in those hearts that we talked about earlier. If you can't see them, just make new ones. We're not going for a perfect heart shape either. These are just kind of the inside of that flower there. And then if you've got room, a little stem. As you can see, I've got kind of two different shapes here. This flower is a little wider, so I just made that, that piece a little wider. This one's a little more round, so that one is more like a true heart. They're different. They're all different in flowers, so don't worry too much about that. Now we are going to add in some dots. And what I'm talking about is just these little um, dots right in here around that stamen. So I'm going to use the wrong end of my brush and I'm going to dip it right into this black paint. And I'm just going to kind of make some dots. Do, 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 do. Are you really making dots if you're not making goofy noises? Can I just add them kind of all around? Now I'm going to go back and add some of that cream and sugar in there. So I've got my white. That's my sugar. I'm going to do the same thing with the white. I'm going to add fewer white dots and I'm going to need to wipe off the tip of my brush here after a little bit. And I just add a little bit of white in there. Now we're going to add in some cream. here at the end where we just want to do some finishing touches. So maybe if you need to clean up the edges of your leaf.
Clean up the edges of your stems. okay to be late. Um, we're actually just finishing up. So if you wait a few minutes, you can follow along um, from the beginning. Um, if you'd like to paint the, um, if you're here with us in the online paint night group, um, it will be in guide one. So you'll be able to watch it um, from the beginning if you want to. Otherwise, I'm, ha I'm happy that you're popping in. Hello. It's good to see you. After your finishing touches are done, um, I am going to add in, I'm going to pull some of this burgundy and mix it with water. And I'm going to add in some uh, splatter. Now I can tell you, um, I am going to use the burgundy. I'm not going to use the red. Red splatter tends to read like blood. So uh, just be cautious. But I'm going to mix in some water to my paint there. Um, I am just going to add a little bit of red spotter just by tapping my brush. Rinse that off. And I might even mix up some gray spotter here since I've got some leftover paint. I like splatters. I feel like when we're doing kind of a modern painting, it just is a little fun. And I like to mix it in there. I don't uh, want the red to just stand by itself. So I like to throw in a little splatter. I think it's super fun. And that is my last little touch there friends so um i am so glad that you painted with me this evening let me add myself back on hello hello um so here is my sample as you can see next to the one we painted this evening um if you're watching on the replay, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for hopping on. Um, make sure you share in the group. I'd love to see everything um, that you make. It is the best part of being an artist is seeing what people create from your inspiration. Um, so definitely post it in the online paint night group. I cannot wait to see it. Um, if you are interested, you can always throw the hashtag um, artist spotlight up there as well um, uh, for a chance. Uh, we choose randomly every Monday somebody uh, to highlight. So feel free to do that. And um, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. Um, we have lots of really fun stuff in store for the group coming up um, in the new year. So check out the events. Stay tuned make sure you post your work. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you for joining me. So have a great night, everybody. Thank you for joining me for cream and sugar poppies.